client side. And then what we're going to say is we're going to say p equals one. And what this means is player equals one. And you'll see why we need to do this in a second. Okay, so now we're going to do start new thread. Now notice in start new thread, I added two new uh, parameters, p and game ID. So this means the current player, so it's either player zero or player one, and the game ID. And game ID is going to stand for which game in this game's dictionary are we playing in this threaded client. Like which one of our clients that's connected here uh, is playing which game. That's why we need that. So let's pass that information. So we're going to pass P, which is either going to be zero or one, like we have there. And we're going to pass game ID. And then we'll have that up here. And just remember that threaded client, one of these functions is continuously running for every single one of our clients. So if we have 100 clients, we have 100 different functions of this running in the background at the same time. Okay. Awesome. So that's how that's working inside our threaded client now. Excuse me, I just had to take a break there. Inside of our threaded client, we now need to add some things. So the first thing we're going to add is ID count. We're going to global ID count because if someone leaves our game or disconnects, we're going to need to subtract from that so we can keep track of accordingly, like how many people are connected, how many games are running and all that stuff. Okay. Now, the first thing we're going to do when someone connects to our, uh, what do you call it? Our server is we're going to send them what player they are. Remember what I was saying in this game class or in this network class, sorry, then when we connect, we're initially just going to decode a string that's either going to be zero or one to tell us what player we are. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to send con dot send str dot encode P. Uh, and I believe it should be actually string P like that so that we know if we're player zero or if we're player one, that's the first step. Next, we're going to say reply equals a blank string. I'm going to say while true. And this is where we're going to start doing some more serious stuff in here. So the way that it's going to work in terms of sending string data from our client to our server is we're going to send one of three different options. We're going to send get, we're going to send reset, or we are going to send a move. And the move is going to be like rock, paper, or scissors. So if we send get, what that means is we want to get the game from the server. So we're going to send that every frame. We're going to send get that string get. And then the server is going to look and it's going to say, okay, what are you sending? You're sending get. All right, we'll send you back the game. That's how that's going to work. Another option is reset. Reset means reset the game. The game has finished. Both players played reset. And that's going to be sent from the client side because the client knows when we want to reset, right? The last one is a move. Same thing when the client makes a move. So like rock, paper, scissors, if they are al allowed to make that move, which we'll check on the client side, we'll send that move to the server. The server will update the game accordingly, and then it will send back the game to the client. And that's how that's going to work. Sweet. So what we'll do now is we're going to say, while well, true, we're going to say data equals con dot uh, receive. And then we're going to say 4096 in here instead of 2048, which we're using before dot decode. The reason we're doing this is just in case um, we're sending too much information that is more than 2048 bits. We want to just double this number so that we can get more. If you run into any issues that say like pickle data was truanced or like ran out of input, just increase this number. Okay. You can literally just do multiply by two in here and that should hopefully fix the error. If it doesn't work, you can like multiply by four, multiply by eight. Um, and that should hopefully fix your error for you. Okay. So now what we're going to say is we're going to say if game ID in games. Now I'll talk about why we're doing this in a second. What we're going to say is we're going to say game equals games game ID. So essentially every time we run this while loop, we're going to check if the game still exists. And that's what we're doing, right? So in this games dictionary, we're seeing if this game ID, which is the key to access the game is still there. Now, why would we check that? Well, if one of our clients disconnects from the game, we're actually going to delete that game from the, uh, what do you call it? The games thing. Now what that's doing for us, <clears throat> excuse me, is not only like keeping track of our memory, which means that we're not going to just continually keep creating games. So like say our server ran for weeks and we never deleted any games, then we'd probably run, run out of memory on our computer, right? If we're playing a lot of games, but it's also going to tell the other client that was connected to that game that, Hey, this game no longer exists. 
That means the other person must have disconnected from it. So we have to do something accordingly, go back to the menu screen, right? Do something like that. Okay, so that's what we'll do there. And then what we're going to say in here is going to say if not data, we're going to break this is similar to before. So I'll go through it a bit quicker. We're going to say else. And now we're going to check the three different things that could have been sent, right? So we've received the data. So we're going to check if we got reset, get, or if we got to move. So the first thing we'll check, we'll say if data equals equals reset. Okay. And then we're going to say if data does not equal get and then else, sorry, this should be an LF, LF data does not equal get else. We'll do something else. Uh, actually, do we need an else? No, we don't need an else. Okay. So if data equals reset, what we're going to do is we're going to say game dot reset, right? Cause we already have the game. And if we look in here, what resets doing is essentially it's resetting both players went so we can play another game really straightforward for that. Next one, if data equals get, what we're going to do is say game or if data does not equal get, sorry. So if it didn't equal re reset and it does not equal get, well then it must be a move. So it means we're either getting rock, paper, or scissors. So we're going to send that move to the game to update it. So to do that, we're going to say game dot play. And then we're going to do the current player number, which is P and then the move and the move is going to be whatever this data is, right? So it'd be data. Okay. And then otherwise, so I guess after that, um, what should we do here? We'll say reply equals game. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do con dot send all. And we're going to say pickle dot dumps uh, and not data, sorry, reply. Okay. And what this is going to do, let me just make sure I didn't run into any errors here is simply going to package up our game into that nice um, sendable form. We're going to send it over to our clients. Client's going to receive it, unpickle it, and then use it to uh, obviously make moves and do different things and draw it to the screen and all that. Okay. All right. So I think that makes sense. We can go through it really quickly. Uh, what time are we at? 25 minutes. All right. So we'll go through it really quickly. Essentially what's happening when you connect, we're going to check if we have an even amount of players or an odd amount of players. If it's an odd amount of players, when you connect, that means we need to create a new game. So we create a new game. If it's not, that means we need to assign you to a game. So what we're going to do is make the current game that only has one player in it ready. We're going to assign you to that and start a new thread. When we start the new thread, what's going to happen is we're going to send to the client what player they are, either player zero or player one. And then what we're going to do is we're going to constantly receive string data from the client. If the game still exists, then what we'll do is we'll check if they're sending us reset, get or remove. If they're sending us a move, we'll make that move. If they're sending us reset, we'll apply that reset to the game. And then we're just going to constantly send back to them the game object. And now what we need to do is just really quickly add some else statements in here so that if some of this stuff doesn't happen, we have like a catch for it. Okay. So what we'll do here is we're just going to simply say else break. Okay. Uh, that should be lined up here. And we're just going to add a try and accept up here. So we're going to say try and we're going to indent all this by just highlighting and pressing tab. I'm going to say accept and then pass. I think that's yeah, no, not pass or accept and then break just in case, you know, something goes wrong with this data dot receive. We want to make sure the server keeps running. So we have that try and accept and then underneath this accept in line with the main function indentation. What we'll do is if we break out of this while loop, we need to close the game and delete it. So to do that is actually we're going to print uh, some on my wrong file here. We're going to print lost connection and then we're going to print uh, what do you call it? Closing game. Okay. And actually we can print that game ID too. If we want to see what game ID we're closing. So we'll say lost connection closing game game ID. Okay. And then we're going to try to delete games game ID. Otherwise we will accept and pass. Okay. And then underneath here, last thing we're going to do is we're going to say ID count minus equals one. And we're going to say connection dot close. Now that I actually think about it, we should probably put this closing game only in this try after we delete just so that we don't, we only close the game once we don't say we're closing the game twice. Okay. So what we're doing down here essentially is if we break out of this while loop. So for example, if the game no longer exists, uh, we're going to break. If something goes wrong with this getting data. So like the player disconnected, we're going to break. 
we're going to say lost connection we're going to try to delete that game the reason we have this try here is because if both players disconnect at the same time one player will delete the game before the other so if we try to delete a key that doesn't exist we're going to run into an issue so we try that um, if that works we will say print closing game and then we'll say that game id otherwise we're going to pass we're going to subtract from the id count and we're going to close the connection sweet so we're rolling we're going pretty fast here now all we got to do is code the client now this is probably the most amount of code i think it's about 100 lines it just is a lot of drawing stuff okay so i'm going to take a break we'll be back in one second and then we're going to code the client all right so i'm back now and we've got about 150 lines to write for this file it's pretty tedious because a lot of the stuff is to do with the drawing like we need those buttons to be working we need um, like all that text to be showing up so that's like 90% or not 90% but like 70% of the code we're about to write is just going to be cosmetic stuff um, but I mean what do you want me to tell you that's what we need to do if we're going to make an online graphical game right so uh, let's start by just coding a class and this is going to be our button class uh, just so that when we have those three buttons you know it just makes things easier so we're going to do our init uh, what do we need in the init? I'm going to go for uh, text. Sorry, I'm coding in the wrong file. Text, X, Y, and color. And we're just going to say that the width and the height will be uniform in here, and we'll just make it the same for all of our buttons. So we're going to say self.text equals text, self.x equals x, uh, self.y equals y, and self.color equals color. Okay, sweet. We'll also add a width and a height in here. So we'll say self.width equals 150, self.height equals 100, and feel free to play with these numbers. This is just what I decided. By the way, guys, I uh, just really want to say this. I'm not focusing on how good this game looks. I know it looks like crap, but you guys I know can go through and tweak the colors and tweak the positions and all that. Um, I just don't want to focus on that because I want to get the hard stuff out of the way in the tutorial. Okay, so let's do a draw method in here. Pretty straightforward. We're just going to do pygame dot draw dot rect and then for the rectangle we're going to take window which is that parameter for the draw and then we're going to do uh what should we do color so self dot self dot color and then we're going to need that rectangle position which is going to be self dot x self dot y self dot width and self dot height like that okay and then i guess let's see if there's anything else we need to add to that no that's fine we're going to define a font so we actually need to make sure we just add this at the top, pygame.font.init. Okay, make sure you guys add that. And we're going to do font equals pygame.font.sys font should help if you spell font correctly. And then here you're going to pick your favorite font. I like Comic Sans. I'm going to make this, how big should this be? Uh, let's make it 40. And then what we're going to do is we're going to render some fonts. So we're going to say text equals font dot render. And we're going to put self dot text. We're going to do one and we're going to do the color, which will be, I guess, in this case, black or white. 255, 255, 255. Okay, next, we're going to draw this on the screen. Now, we want this to be centered on the button. So I'm going to do some, like, I don't know, decently complicated math. Uh, it's not really that crazy, but we're going to just say wind.blit text. And then we're going to say self dot x minus uh is it minus no it's plus self.x plus in brackets and we're going to round in these brackets i know this is confusing we're going to do self.width over two minus round and we're going to say text.get underscore width over two now what this is doing essentially is we're starting at our x position but obviously we want our text to be centered so to center our text we need to know not only the width of the like container of the button but the width of our text so we're going to get the width of our text or of our button we're going to subtract that from the width of what do you call it our text so that way it should add like 20 or 30 pixels from the left side so our text is centered okay for the y we'll do a similar thing so inside make sure you don't mess up these brackets inside here we're just going to actually copy this uh, and we're going to paste it right after a comma and we're simply going to say self dot y plus round self dot height okay plus text dot get underscore height or minus text dot get underscore height over two and that should center our button um yeah okay next we're going to say define click we're going to add a position here this is just going to tell us 
if we clicked on the button or not. So it's a really basic uh, if statement here. So we're just going to say x1 equals pause zero and y1 equals pause one. Now what we're going to say is we're going to say if self dot x is less than or equal to x1 less than or equal to self dot x plus self dot width and self dot y is less than or equal to y1 less than or equal to self dot y plus self dot height I believe that's correct let me just check this uh, yep that's correct then what we'll simply do is we'll return true indicating that we did press the button otherwise we will return false now I know I'm speeding through this but it's just because it's really basic pie game stuff and we're doing online games so let me make sure I change that so I don't want to focus too much on the cosmetics, but essentially what this is doing is it's checking if the coordinate, which we're going to pass in here, which is going to be a tuple of X and Y of our mouse position is actually in the button. And the way we're doing that is we're saying, well, we go on the X, right? We check if it's greater than the X, we check if it's less than the X plus the width. So like if it's in between the little box and then for the Y value, we do the same thing, but we're checking vertically to see if it's in that box. If you don't understand that, I have Pi game tutorials where I go through like collision and how all that works. Um, I'm not really going to talk about that right now. Okay, sweet. So we've got that working. Now what we're going to do is actually, let's see what I want to code now. Um, let's code the main function and then we'll get into redraw window. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to define those three buttons that we're going to have at the bottom of our screen. So rock, paper, scissors do that we're going to say buttons equals and we're just going to make three buttons first button will be rock so we're going to say rock we're going to start it at 50 500 and then we're just going to go and give it a color of 000, zero, zero. okay we're going to create another button we'll say button and then we'll say scissors we'll give it a let me just check here 250 as an x 250 as an x 500 as a Y and for the color for that, I got to check what color I made this. I believe that I made that ah, red. Okay. So the 255 zero, zero. And then one more button. Can anyone guess what this one is going to be? It's going to be paper. We're going to put this at a position of 450. So if I can go here, 450, 500, and we will simply make it blue or green, sorry, zero, two, fifty, five, zero. So red, green, blue. Okay, sweet. So that should be it for our buttons. Um, and now we'll get into the main function and start coding some stuff. So